Today, we're going to talk about the greatest players that we ever saw personally, either at a ball game or on television. We, we're using the criteria of players that played from 1950 to the present time. Hi, baseball fans. Welcome to Talking Baseball. This is Ron. Carlos, I'm Phil, and Brian behind the camera, and we're going to talk to you guys about what we believe to be the best players we have ever seen. So that gives us a 72-year span, and, uh, you know, guys like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and the Hornets Wagner, we hear a lot about these guys, but we never saw them because basically we weren't even born. That's right. So we're going to give you basically a first-hand look at the players that in, 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 uh, inspired us as fans, and we're going to start with uh, uh, the American League. We're going to do both the American and National League. We're going to start with the, the American League now, and we're all going to take a turn at who we believe was the best for first baseman we ever saw. So, And fans, don't think we forgot about the players of yesteryear, because we're going to talk about them too in a future show. Yeah, definitely. Could they play in today's game? Uh -huh. You think about that one. Mm, definitely. So go ahead, Ron. What, who do you think was the best first baseman in the American League that you ever saw? Carew. Okay. I, I mean, I, I could go back years before him and probably name another one or two. But uh, in my time, I, I'm just... I like Keith Hernandez, but he's in the National League. and yeah. He probably wasn't the best ever, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, he's your favorite guy. He's my know, favorite first baseman. So we all baseman. have a favorite player. Uh, Carew hit yeah. over three, had over 3,000 base hits. Yeah. Probably somewhere around the 300 uh, bat average. Well, Do you have that stat? Yeah, I got all the stats. Here. What's what's Carew's stat? Uh, Carew uh, lifetime batting average was 328. Huh. He this is what really impressed me about Carew. He had a 991 fielding percentage as a first base. How many gold gloves? He had uh, where are you at on the gold gloves? Don't see it on here, but uh, he was an 18 All Star uh, team uh, selection. He was a, an MVP. He was Rookie of the Year. He had seven batting titles. Hmm. That, that's really saying something. And the other thing was, he had 353 stolen bases yeah. yes. in his career. Now, I know you didn't agree with Carew. Carlos, <laughs> tell us who your guy is. Uh, okay, my guy. I think a first base, baseman should be a menacing guy. When he gets to home plate, people's got to be scared. Mm -hmm. And this guy for me is Frank Thomas. I know that he didn't play a lot of games on first base. He was DH later on. Yeah. But he could win the game with a swing of a bat. Sure. Very powerful player, uh, good hitter, uh, you know, durable. Except at the end of his career, he just uh, did more DHing than anything else. Yeah, well, basically, the th I think the thing that falls off right away is your defense. But as long as you, they have the DH in the American League, that prolonged a lot of guys' careers. Exactly. Yeah, That's but what over 3,000 hits, you got to say, Carew probably won a game or two. I would think so. You would think so. Yeah, I mean, three hundred and twenty-eight bat average. Caru is going to put the ball in play. Well, you, you know, know the for thing sure, about, he's going to make contact. That's true. And, and the thing about Caru was he was a spray hitter. Yes. You couldn't oh, play you defense couldn't play against him anyway. No, you couldn't play oh, him anyway. Oh, could you imagine if they played the shift against him? No, you could not. He'd eat you alive. Yeah. He'd chew you up because he know? went to left field a lot. Oh yeah, he'd have been a four hundred hitter probably more than once. No probably. question, that was yeah. the case. Yeah, he was a hitting machine, and Absolutely. he he hit with a wrist, he sprayed the ball everywhere. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and in, in that regards, he was a pure hitter. Yeah, Absolutely. and a gold glove. Oh yeah, and a gold glove. Okay, so let's go on to second base. Well, let's ask the fans. If you guys know somebody that you want to put in this first base, just, you know what to do in the comments section. And Let then we can know. argue. And then we can <laughs> argue among ourselves. Yeah, someone that you have seen. Yeah. You got to, yeah, you've had to see them in person or on television. Uh, not, none of these legends that were born in the 19th century. Right. So, with that, we'll go to the second baseman in the American League. Go ahead, Carlos, what do you got? All right, American League second base, I have Roberto Alomar. The guy was a perennial Golden Glove winner. I think he won like 14 Golden Gloves. Uh, and he, he was a great hitter also. And he's in the Hall of Fame, of course. Yep. And it's a clutch player. Uh, I think he deserves to be in my list for the best second baseman. Well, I agree with that. Totally agree with that. I checked his numbers. He's got over 2,700 career hits. He... Uh, had a 300 lifetime batting average. Mm -hmm. He was in 12 All-Star games. 
and his fielding percentage is phenomenal. It's a 984 fielding yep. percentage. Yep. That's that's saying something. There was a guy baseball. named Evans that played second base for Philadelphia, but I think it's before 1950. Yeah. So I'll, yeah. I'll agree with you guys. You saw that no, no, I, he might be the only yeah. one they saw him yeah. play. I was, I was probably my teens. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and let's not forget, Alomar was on two world championship teams. Yes, he did. With the uh, with the Blue Jays. So that's another notch in his resume. So I would pretty much agree on that one. Okay, let's take a look. What's your pick? My pick was Alomar. Oh, Because oh, oh, that's, yeah. that's why I wrote the stats yeah. down. The other thing uh, I was looking at for second baseman... I considered him, because I know you mentioned uh, uh, Nellie Fox as, as one. He was impressive. He had, he had a, a 288 lifetime batting average. He was on 12 He was awesome, two. but I think he played most of his career at third base. Mm, most of his career, I, again, we look at these numbers, you think of oh, such and such play. Like, uh, an example, uh, Rod Carew was a second baseman, but he played most of his career first, as first yes, base. That's right. So you've got to look at these numbers to really... Decide who you're going to pick. You know, the other two I liked a little bit, but they weren't the same stats. It would be uh, the guy that played with Brett, is it Frank White? Uh, second Frank, White, yeah. Frank White, Frank White, I White. like him. Yeah. And Willie Randolph for the Yankees, he also was a good second baseman. Oh, yeah. oh, please. He was, but he wasn't a Hall of Fame type. No, he no, didn't he have the Hall of Fame number, but Hall there Hall weren't fame. decent players. Yeah. Well, then we could, we could say Robinson Cano. He's got better stats than uh, Randolph, I'm sure. Uh, uh, I, I would think so. Check that out. The biggest mistake he ever made was leaving the Yankee franchise. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, he just went downhill. Absolutely. But he is 39, too. It yeah. didn't matter where he's playing now. Well, he could have been a... They could have retired his number if he could stay with the Yankees. He could have been a contender. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Third baseman, American League. I'll go first. All right. Okay. Brooks Robinson. Agreed. Yeah, um, we're looking at a guy who had over 2,800 hits. His batting average was acceptable. It was a 267 He was batting, a vacuum. He was a human it was a vacuum. Glove. It was like a giant glove. If you hit the ball to third field, base, you were out. Yeah, you were the out. The best Definitely fielding out. third baseman uh, no that question. I've seen. Yeah. Without a doubt. He's on a, he was a world champion a couple of times with Baltimore Orioles. He was with them his entire career. Decent hitter. What was it? You have his batting average? Yeah, batting? it was 267. Right, decent. It's not Hall of Fame no. batting average, but it's, it's decent. His glove put him in the Hall of Fame. No he question. Had, he, had, uh, he was a, an MVP in 64. Uh, he had 16 gold gloves. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And he was on 18 amazing. All-Star teams. So I looked at other third basemen in the American League, and I don't think anybody came close except I agree. Ones. I agree. Guys got okay. out of me. The, only, the one I have that didn't come close fielding but was a great player was George Brett. That's my pick for third baseman. He, he was a hitter. He was a great he hitter. Was definitely a uh, hitter. Hard to strike out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, decent power. Yeah. And in the field, he wasn't that bad. Not as the same caliber as Brooke Robinson, mm -hmm. but that's my pick for yeah. third base. Do you happen to have Nettles stats? Because he was a good glove. That's, another, that's another glove. He was a good well, his glove. His batting average was like 240-something, which oh, okay. kind of keeps him off the list. Sure does. The uh, thing about him was he played with great players. He, he's kind of like uh, Phil Rizzuto, who was an average ball player who played on great teams. Yeah. And he was uh, a friendly guy to the media. He was kind of kind of yeah. a guy you laughed with and laughed at. And that kind of put him in the Hall of Fame because yeah. if you really look at that's another thing we ought to talk about sometime. Who Who's in the hall that doesn't belong there and who's not in the hall that does belong there? Yeah, Phil Rizzuto, another guy, Mark Belanger <laughs> from the Orioles. He was the same, you know, he was a great team, but he yeah. wasn't Belanger, Rizzuto, yeah. those guys. Yeah. I have a, an argument about the shortstop we're all going to pick. I know we all agree on Derek yeah. Jeter. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But here's my argument. Go here's ahead. my rub. Go. Who was the reporter that didn't vote him in? That's the one. Uh, He'd like to know. <laughs> I want to know his name. Uh, you'll never know. We'll never find that out because they'll tar and feather the guy. He should be ashamed of himself. Yeah, definitely. You're looking at a guy with 3,465 hits, sixth all-time in hits. Uh, and if he hadn't been hurt, a couple, those, remember he blew his shoulder out one time going into third base, lost almost the entire season. Who knows how many more hits he would and, have. And you're not even taking leadership quality into oh, yeah, consideration. Oh, yeah, the captain. He was the man. Yeah, he was. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, 310 lifetime batting average, 14 all-star games, five gold gloves, and five world championships. I mean, come on. How many home runs? 260. 
He's a guy he always said, I'm not a home run hitter. Yeah. But he hit the home run at the right moment. That's it. That's what counted. I'd like yeah. to know out of those 260 home runs he hit, how many were crucial to wins. Yeah. And wasn't he the stepping stone for the larger shortstop? Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, six two, six three. Yeah. No, it was. Um, I mean, I think it was Alex Rodriguez was. The Rodriguez, Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah, those are the guys. They were yeah, the guys. Was who was a uh, uh, shortstop first at the Yankees? Uh, Rodriguez or uh, or uh, Gina? Because uh, Rodriguez Rodrigue, he played third Rodrigue, base too. Rodriguez. Yeah, well, at the same time, I think Rodriguez was a little one year earlier. Gina was always the, the shortstop. Always the shortstop. Yeah. When when uh, the Yankees got uh, Rodriguez Alex. from uh, Texas. He went to third. He base. went to third. Right. They said, you're going to play third. You can come here, but you're going to play third. And he agreed to it. Yeah. And actually, he turned out to be a pretty damn good third baseman. So, he did. Pretty yeah, good ball well player. You know what? We left him out. But yeah. yeah. 696 home runs. Yeah. Why would he hang around for 700? Yeah. That's yeah, the, I can't yeah. figure that out. Yeah. Four home runs. Why not he's there? Yeah. Well, that's the way it is. Okay. Carlos, who you got for right fielder? Right fielder, although he played most center fielder, I got, of course, the Mick. Mickey Mount okay. on the right field. All of us cannot argue that he is probably the best fielder, center fielder, or, or, or right fielder in the game. He had everything, legs, oh, defense, uh, arm, uh, he power, he for average, incredible player. I'm not even going to give you the name of my right field, I'll just say 406. That would be the splendid splinter, Ted Williams. Ted Williams. I just didn't see Ted Williams. Didn't Ted Williams play left? I think he did. I think he yeah. did. No, I thought he was right field. No, left. Well, I'll tell you how much I know. You know enough. Well, <laughs> but he's in there, and I mean, he'll be yeah. in there somewhere. He, I, I've got him in there. And the reason why I had him on right field is because of my pick in, in center field, which I give later. But. Yeah. Okay. So you, you're okay with that? It, 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 no. <laughs> so who you got for right field then? I, I thought Ted Williams played right, but maybe not. No, he played left. You're sure he, of that? Yeah. Uh, Thing was, and I always remember as a kid, uh, well, as a young man, really, when when Carl Strumpsey took over in left field, he said, and you Strumpsey used to say it himself, I play the wall almost as well as Ted Williams, and uh, I always remember him saying that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and all right, so if we if we agree to that, then there's no <laughs> argument. Then who who do we? Who do we put in center field? I got to put Mickey in center. Well, I got Mickey in center too. Yeah, yeah, Carlos, you and, got you got. The it. reason why I have Mickey in right field because I have to have Griffey Jr. in center. Okay, I still got to get my right fielder. You good? Okay. Yeah. Before you go on with that, because I know yeah. I can't argue with Griffey either. If anybody picked him, but for my right fielder, it's Ichiro Suzuki. Oh yes. Yeah, I mean this great guy pick. had maybe three thousand great picks, some odd hits. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ne next next to Roberto Clemente, he had the best arm in right field I That's ever right. saw. That's right. And and before he came into the league, I was thinking about uh, uh, Dewey Dewey Evans, Dwight Evans of the Red Sox. That guy had a cannon too. But Ichiro, he had to be my pick. If you combine his Japanese numbers it, yeah. with his MLB numbers, he had. Four thousand three hundred. More than Pedro. Sixty-seven. Absolutely. Oh, I just can't use Suzuki's name in the same sentence as Roberto Clemente's. Well, I, it, it, the guy had an arm. I mean, he could play right field like. Well, but remember, Clemente was in the National League. How many? Well, I'm just saying, as far as that's great, why we're picking great outfielders. How many hits did he have in American baseball? Uh, three thousand eighty-nine. No, oh, the guy's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the guy was incredible. He had. Uh, Matter of fact, I looked up the stats. In one season, in 2004, he had 262 base hits, which is an MLB record. Yep. Nobody even came close to that. And you know, on, on the World Baseball Classic, well, each country you know, brought their team. Mm -hmm. He played for, of course, Japan. Yeah. He single-handed, basically, won the tournament for Japan. Yeah. His single, uh, you know, RBIs, defense, everything, that he needed to do for the Japanese team to win, and he did it, and they won. They were the champions. Yeah. So he had two batting titles. Um, no, that's a good pick. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that pick. Yeah. And a three eleven left. So we got Griffey, and we got Ichiro. And actually, you can't argue with either one, really. You know. No. Okay. Okay. Let's go to well center field. Uh, yeah, we haven't done that. Yeah. I I picked Mickey Mantle. I I okay. picked Mickey. Uh, the guy was maybe the greatest single talent. Ever to play the game, and if he'd had two good legs, God knows what number, numbers he would have. I think a stat that nobody even probably knows that 
from home to first, from the left side, he, until today, I think he still holds the record. It's the fastest time from home to first, from the left side. Yeah, 3-1. Yeah, and, and that's Vegas, right. It was just, 3 you got power from both sides. It was a switch hitter. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how many home runs on each side. Maybe you have that stat there, but uh, he could hit well from both sides. Yeah. Well, he, he batted left-handed most of the time because he was facing right-handed pitchers. But he hit over 300 of his home runs left-handed. But well, every time I see... 296. Well, you know what? Every time, I, every time I see a contest of the home run derby that they show sometimes replays, mm. he always... Back right hand. Because that's his next slide. Right. Yeah. His dad, his uh, grandfather and his dad uh, made him throw, uh, made him bat either side because I think his grandfather was uh, a right, right handed and he had a bat left against him and his, and his dad was left handed so he had a bat right against him. So that's how he ended up becoming a, a switch hitter. But his natural side was always right side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Left field, I got Ted Williams. Who you got? I didn't see Ted Williams play, but I my choice would be Ricky Henderson. The guy have power, speed, record in stolen bases, uh, lead off hitter like nobody else could, uh, good glove. Ricky Henderson for me. Okay, I know he had over three thousand career hits. Yes. Uh, he had what fourteen hundred stolen bases, roughly in that he area. Did. As far as leadoff hitters, he had the most home runs, most extra yeah, bases, yeah, exactly. stolen right. bases. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're not going to argue. He's got more home, yeah. home runs from the leadoff spot. I wasn't a it. fan because uh, well, he's a hot cut dog. the pie, I didn't like that. He's a hot dog. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was pretty much I didn't like that. But well, we, can't we take his talent away. We, exactly. We're grading on their talent. Well, I picked Ted because a 344 lifetime batting average. Uh, oh, yeah. I, mean, now, I have Ted as one of the three outfielders also. Yeah. But listen to this. He had, where are you, bud? He had like uh, 26, over 2,600 hits, but he lost three full seasons to World War II yeah. for military service, and then he lost parts of three more seasons because of the Korean conflict. Yeah. So if you get that, if you add that up, that's five or six years of baseball he never got Who to knows? play. Yeah. No question. Yeah. Uh, doesn't he have the highest average batting average of all time? Four no. or six, right? Well, uh, besides the old timers, besides the last. Know. Uh, last, 3, 344. But the last they hit 400, right? That's no, the last they hit 400. I would say in mo the modern era, he's, yeah. he's definitely got the highest batting average. Yeah. He's, matter of fact, Ted uh, Babe Ruth himself only had a 343 batting average. I mean, average. that alone. Yeah. They, they last meant to hit 400 in a season. Yeah. That alone should get you in the Hall of Fame. Oh, that alone. It's amazing. You know how hard is that? Who was close? Carew was close, right? Carew hit no, I think so. Tony uh, Wynn was closer. Tony Wynn Tony was 389. Wynn, uh, uh, George Brett. Yeah, George Brett too. That's 391. right. 391. 391, yes. 89, yeah. Tony Wynn, 91, yeah. Brett. So that alone, that's that's enough to get you. That's and I, so hard, man. I think Rod Carew had a, two, a 388 season as well. So they, they get there, but they yeah, can't quite was up there. Up. That's yeah, right. He had one great and season. Somebody had a chance and blew it in the last week. He was right at 390-something, and then he went uh, 0 for like 6 in the last two games, and I can't remember who Ella was. Uh, well, in reverse, I don't, I don't know who that would be, but in, uh, Ted Williams played a doubleheader the, the last uh, day of the season, and he was batting 400. So his manager, 399.567 or whatever it was, and he said, you rounded out to 400. He said, if you want to play the doubleheader, fine. If not, you've got the 400 batting average. Yeah. And Ted Williams said, no, I'm playing. You know, it's my team. Mm -hmm. I'm playing a game. He played both games of the doubleheader, and he went six for eight. And he ended up with a 406 batting average. So that's the story behind that, the last that's true. Yep. day, which is amazing because he, he, wasn't afraid of, he wasn't afraid to lose. He wasn't afraid to fail, and I think that's why he was such a great player. But he knew he wasn't going to fail. Yeah. He, he got did. 400. You're yeah, going he, up there knowing, hey, I'm going to get ahead. Yeah, you have confidence but, yeah, in yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not going up there saying, I hope this guy doesn't throw me a curveball because I can't hit it. Yeah. You know, he can throw me anything. Yeah, That's right. So. Funny story about Ted Williams. My dad told me years ago that uh, if a pitch was close, and, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it, just a, a comment as far as what kind of hitter Ted Williams was, the umpire would ask him, what do you think, Ted? Was it a strike? <laughs> if they missed by an inch or something, the umpire would ask Ted Williams if it was over the plate or not. Oh, that, that's like, exactly. Cool. Sounds like also, a wives' tale to me. Sounds like a dad story. Also, a lot of people have studied and look at the, his swing. They say it's the most perfect swing in baseball. And if you want to be a good hitter, 
you you follow that swing and you copy that swing because it's, it's, it's a perfect swing. Yeah. Ted Williams. It's amazing. And you know what's amazing too? When you think about all these really great hitters, most of them are left-handed. Ichiru, left-handed hitter. Carew was left-handed. Yeah. Most pitchers are right-handed. Yeah. Uh, of course, Mantle was a, was a switch hitter, so switch hitter. it didn't matter. Yeah, right. Big advantage. Switch hitter. Yeah, it was. So. George Brett, left-handed. Left Tony Wynn, left-handed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Left -handed. Yeah. yeah. Mickey Anderson. Babe Ruth was left-handed. Just to, Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. Left yeah they all left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a big advantage. You're yeah. always you're facing right. He's facing right-handed right yeah. pitchers yeah. by ninety percent of the time. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay, let's go to the catcher. American League catcher. What do you got? Me. Go ahead. All right. I got Pudge Ivan Rodriguez. Okay. I think he's a the the years that he put in. He wasn't a, a, a lot of power hitter, but he was a decent hitter. Mm -hmm. Great catching. Uh, took a lot of people. Uh, you know, picked out a lot of people. I don't know how many he picked out, but uh, you couldn't steal on the guy. The guy was great catch. He had a cannon. And, he did. Yeah, he had yeah, a cannon. He did. And he, he has longevity. He played for a lot of years. I wonder years. what kind of numbers he had behind uh, batting. Well, I got I him here, matter of fact, because he was one of the people I was going to, you know, as I narrowed it down, he had 2,844 base hits. Yeah, what brought him into... For a catcher, that's a lot of hits. I know. Yeah. What brought him into his pinnacle one when he was the World Series with the Marlins. Yeah. That's what he was really was the catalyst on that series. He hit a couple of home runs, like had like ten hits, and this is one of the big reasons why they won yeah. the, the yeah. Marlins one right I here. Watching right. That. The Marlins. Well he had a two ninety six lifetime batting average. Oh. He uh, won an M V P. Yeah. Thirteen gold gloves and here here's the stat that blew my my mind. A nine ninety one fielding percentage. Yeah. You can't get much better. Very good so catch. He, he was great. Uh, Who did you pick? I picked Yogi. Uh, and, and like I said, I was t toying between the two of them, but yeah. I picked Yogi for a number of reasons. One was the fact that he was the greatest jump ball hitter I ever saw in my life. And 10 world championships. That's it, right you, there. You know, man. Yeah, but I believe there are nine men on a team, not one. Yeah, so. true. But, yeah, but And he played for the Yankees. Yeah. You, you got to... Yeah. But, he, but he was on 18 All-Star games, won three MVPs. He, too, had a 988 fielding percentage, so that's no Who was the second baseman during the era that Yogi Berra played? He also won 10 championships. You can't name him. Mm, I'm not sure. That's my that. point. Yeah. You play for the Yankees, you got some rings. Yeah. That's, well, there's a lot of guys who got rings and sat on the bench, too. Correct. For the Yankees. That's why Correct. What, Tony Kubik, what did he play? Shortstop? Shortstop. Yeah. He only played, like, nine seasons. And you always remember him getting hit in the throat with that. And Boyer, hey, you know, we didn't mention Cleet Boyer. Cleet, what a fielder. Another, he was. another glove. Yeah. Unbelievable glove. Cleet Boyer. He was yeah. I thought he was better than his brother. Ken, Ken Boyer, he was. He played for the Cardinals. Yes. But uh, he couldn't hit. But he didn't have to hit. The Hawk. Everybody else hit. Oh, I know. Was, wasn't it Billy Martin's second baseman? Ah, good. Good one. That's right. Billy Martin was a second baseman. Yeah, he's got well, a lot of oh, yeah. that whole era. Yeah, Rizzo. Yeah, got a lot of rings. Billy Martin, uh, Moose Scarin, yeah. yeah, Boya, Trash, Mantle, Maris. Yeah, there you go. And I don't like the Yankees. I know. Billy Martin was a second baseman. I, I know the '69 <laughs> Yankees. You, know, you love the Yankees. They were. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of course. God. Oh my God. Okay, so I got Yogi, uh, and really, like I said, 285 lifetime batting average is pretty healthy. Um, I, I have to go with Rodriguez. I think he was more athletic. Better athlete. Uh, yeah, definitely a better athlete. Better arm. Um, man, I can't say it was a better hitter. I mean, 296 is yeah. is 296. I mean, I think he had a better arm, Rodriguez. I think he was more agile. Mm -hmm. Probably do more things than Yogi know, could do, too. Well, it always amazed me about Yogi. He was only like five, six or seven. Yeah. And yet he had 350 home runs. Of course, he had a short porch and right, but a lot of his balls went into the gap. He was a switch hitter, wasn't he? No, he was a lefty. He was a batted lefty. Another left-handed hitter. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's it. So, well, anyway. So let's move forward now. Uh, I picked uh, two right-handed pitchers and two left-handed pitchers that uh, played in the American League. My first one, and I know you're gonna, guys are going to look at me like, what? <laughs> uh, I picked uh, Roger Clemens. Not allowed. Well, Not against the rules. They, they never, never proved that he took anything. 
And that's why he never tested positive. So then Alex Rodriguez. Well, he did test positive. No, he didn't. And he admitted that. He admitted. He admitted. Yeah, he admitted. Yeah, he admitted. Yeah, he yeah, admitted. He admitted so reading. with that as a criteria, this and uh, this is why I went with him. 354 wins, 184 losses. I mean, my God. No, no, yeah. You know, it's not real. Right, and, that was for sure. 4,672 strikeouts for a career, seven gold gloves, or not gold gloves, but Cy Young awards. Yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, and the other thing that impressed me was he had, he had uh, 46 shutouts, and he completed 118 games. Guys today don't even complete games. Well, I deleted him from okay. any kind of thought. So, in his place, who would you pick? <laughs> I don't know. Um, my my other right-hander is uh, Jim Palmer. Jim Palmer was pretty he awesome. Was, he one. was nasty. He had that, well, that wind-up like a, like a yeah. fan. You Let know? me just ask you oh, a question, yeah. if you remember. How did he do in 69? The World Series. Uh, I think they lost. They lost, didn't yeah. they? He, well, they he actually <laughs> lost. I think he lost a couple of games in '69. But the thing about him, is he had uh, he completed 211 games in his career. He was 268, 152, but a 286 ERA. Who who has an under three anymore? And this guy had a, a career of under three. And, and how many complete games did he throw? Also, he, he had 211 complete games today. So if you go six innings, you're a hero. Yeah, you don't have complete games anymore. Um, he How about had, Don Lawson? He was ten He was ten games under five hundred for a career. Um, his the reason he ended up under five hundred is because he had a three three and twenty one season with the Orioles one year. He was terrible. You wipe that out, he's got a winning record. But for one day in his life. He was the greatest pitcher Ever. on the planet. Bob Fellett is another name. Yeah, yeah. But and then you're looking at beyond, you're looking early. Fellett the, picks in the 50s, didn't he? Uh, yeah, but most of his career was in, yeah, was it was in the 30s and yeah. 40s. Yeah, he was near the end of his career. Okay. So, but Jim Palmer, uh, he had eight seasons of 20 wins or more, which uh, it, it impressed me. Yeah. Because a lot of guys don't even have 20 <laughs> starts anymore. But... Uh, his postseason was eight and three. Of course, one of those losses was uh, no, actually two of those losses was in the the World Series with the Mets. With the Mets. And um, with who? The Mets. The Mets. Oh, oh. Remember them? The Metropolitans. <laughs> the Metropolitans. And uh, he had uh, three Cy Youngs and uh, four Gold Gloves, which I didn't realize he had. So he was he was an excellent pitcher with, and he had two World Championships. So. What you got for right-handers? Of course, I got the Von Ryan Express. The one and only Nolan Ryan. Seven, no hits. That alone gets you in the Hall of Fame. Incredible speed. Uh, great competitor. Uh, he has uh, longevity. He was a great pitcher for many, many years. So for me, it's Nolan Ryan. What was his... Um American League versus National League, where do we have the majority of his victories, do you know? Oh, gosh, I don't know mm. offhand. I, no. I, I wasn't looking at them. But I want to say maybe the American League. I would think the American League, because yeah. he's probably spent more seasons there. He was with the Mets first, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the other National League was Texas uh, Rangers. Texas Rangers. Yeah. Um, uh, the Astros, did he play for the Astros? Yeah, he went to went the Astros. That's where he yeah. lost to the Phillies in the playoffs yeah. in 1980. But he was with the Angels. He put a lot of wins up with the Angels. Yeah. Uh, and that's him. 5,700 strikeouts. I know. Jeez. Seven no hitters. Yeah. And you top that. It's Seven crazy. no hitters. Well, a lot of people say that, uh, well, because he had 292 losses. And, but he didn't play on a lot of really great teams. Exactly. No, his win loss record wasn't all that yeah, good. Yeah, but the point is, like I say, mm -hmm. he played for some crappy teams. Yeah. And he was he 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 lost a lot of two one games or three two games. Oh yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. Mets couldn't Pins score. Cut. Started them off with a man on third. Yeah, not, that's, that's <laughs> another thing we got to talk about. They were terrible when he when he played for the Mets. Oh God. So okay, let's look at left-handers. Okay. Who do you got for lefties? I got, of course, the big guy, the big unit, Randy Johnson. No, that I guy was there. Yeah. that guy was impressive yeah. and. 
menacing when you go to bat against that if guy. If you were a lefty, you didn't even want to get up against. He's got the Johnson. record of uh, blowing up a pigeon in the middle of a hit, uh, pitch. Yeah, remember John Crook in the All Star game, yeah. and uh, Randy threw the ball high, high and wide, and, and Crook starts one of these, you know, because Crook was funny. Anyway. Yeah, he was. He gets out of the batter's box. Comes back in, he just stands on the line. <laughs> yeah. The complaints over here. Yeah, I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm not moving. Hey, you know who we didn't mention? And I'm surprised at, at you. What? Mr. Jackson. Reggie Jackson? Oh, uh, Reggie Jackson, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't all that impressed with Reggie Jackson. He was he was a terrible fielder. So, yeah. There, he didn't yeah. have much of a batting average. He had a lot of home runs. He would. But, uh, I mean, he, he had one season. In October, where he pretty much that pretty much put him in the Hall of Fame. Mr. October. Yeah. Five hundred plus, right? Five sixty-three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Hard to uh, leave him out of there. But uh, no, I, I was I've never been impressed with his defense. He, he had no arm. Well, he hit he hit the three home runs in the one in series the line, yeah. on the first pitch for three different pitchers. Right. That's that's impressive. And Let me be two the games other. too. And then he hit the home run. He laid off the next game. He hit the home run in the yeah. next game. Yeah. So. That that was impressive, but the rest of his career, he he was okay. Better he started, okay. He started he well, stirred up a lot of a lot of grief in the dugout. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, oh, and, yeah. Him and, and uh, Billy Martin. Billy Martin didn't see eye to eye. That's for sure. So that that was kind of cool. Well, yeah. Whitey Ford had 156 complete games. He was 236 and 106 with a 275 ERA, which is unreal. And you can't say, oh, well, he was played with the Yankees. He is the one who earned the 2.75 ERA, not the rest of the team. Yeah. So yeah, but the Yankees probably averaged four runs a game. Yeah, but which helps. Yeah, but the point being, who nobody. No, I'm not nobody arguing nobody why he fought. He was awesome. Yeah, there's no doubt. So, and he lost a couple of years to the military too. So you're probably looking at another 30 or 40 wins that he could have tapped mm -hmm. onto his record as well. So, and my other lefty, of course, is is like Carlos said. It's Randy Johnson, and he had a hundred complete games in his career, which is impressive. Yeah. Considering they, he was on a pitch count most of his career, so to to to, to complete a hundred games in a career with that pitch count and with the amazing. speed he threw, oh, it's another thing. Ford probably did Ford throw ninety miles an hour? Yeah, I doubt. Probably it. not. I doubt well, it. You know, so if you're bringing it at hundred miles an hour, yeah. you're putting a lot of wear and tear on the arm. Sure, yeah. and sure. Well, you. Complete, complete 100 games, yeah. that's saying something. No, yeah. So he was 303 and 166 is, was his win-loss record. And he had five Cy Youngs. Wow. Which nobody remembers that because they're always thinking about uh, Clements with seven and most everybody else had three. Yeah. Um, but he had five. And most of these wins were in the American League. That's why I put him in the American League. So when he was with the Mariners? Uh... He was with, uh, yeah, Seattle. Seattle. That's right. I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah, Seattle. And then he went to, he was with the Yankees for a couple of years, and then he went to uh, to uh, Arizona to finish it up. And that's, that's where right. he got his world championship. He did. There. He won there against the Yankees, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So we're now down to the closer and the DH. So for closer, I don't think we even have to. No, discuss no argument for any of us. Mariano Rivera. Absolutely. Six hundred fifty-two saves. Um, 2.21 ERA. <laughs> and listen to this. When I looked this up, I had to take a double take. He only had six errors in his in his career. Six playing errors. Because nobody hit the ball. Yeah. He had seven chances. He had six errors. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that was amazing to me. Um, his playoff record was eight and one, and of course the one loss was it was Arizona in the seventh inning of the seventh game or ninth inning of the seventh game. Uh, Forty two saves. During his playoff career, some guys don't have forty-two. Also, saves he career. he did not give that many base on balls when he came not, uh, in relieving. Yeah. He and he received he make you hit the ball when you couldn't right? hit him. Only player, right. only player to get one hundred percent, one hundred percent of the vote. Yeah, absolutely. I guarantee you, the guy that didn't vote for Derek probably didn't vote that year for uh, <laughs> yeah, it was Mariano. Yeah, same guy. I, I like you. <laughs> I, I'd love to know who that was. Okay, the last guy we're looking at. The DH. Yeah. Who's your DH, Carlos? Well, there's got to be no doubt. The best DH of all times, Edgar Martinez. Uh, that see, guy, I had Frank. That guy was uh, a, I mean, the big. If you're talking about a specialist on something, 
that's his specialty. Uh, but I don't think Frank Thomas deserves a spot on the team. So I'm putting him in as the DA. <laughs> well, well, he's just a Hall of Famer. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can put him in the well, DA. Well, no, he was terrible in the field. I mean, he wasn't a fielder at all. Well, he, he played first base. Yeah, he? I guess you don't have to be a fielder. But well, I'm gonna, you're going you're gonna to be surprised who I pick. Go ahead. Paul Molitor. A lot of hits. Very good. A lot of hits. Very good. A lot of hits. Yeah, 306 lifetime values. Yep. Here's the thing that impressed me, he had over 500 stolen bases. Paul Marlon? Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. So that uh, that's what I got. You can argue the point, but uh, I'm going to stick with that guy. So that's our American League team. All right, I'm just waiting for us to talk about real baseball teams yeah, like the, the, the National League. The real league, yeah. The real league. So, well, that wraps up the American League for us. Uh, I hope some of you uh, will write in, give us a like on uh, on Facebook, and let us know what you think is your uh, favorite American League players of all time. So for now, for Ron, for Carlos, and Brian behind the camera, this is Phil, and we'll catch you next time on Talking Baseball.